We're video games. Sunzunkyo no Yabo is a game starring a Buddhist monk who shoots swastika fireballs at various people minding their own business. Now, normally I like to make summarizing remarks just to drive home how insane it is. When you put it all in one sentence like that, it tends to sound monkey wearing a tutu bonkers, and a sombrero, the monkey's also wearing a sombrero. But in this case, I'm just doing my civic duty. What I'm telling you right now is just the first thing you need to understand before we delve deeper into the mind-swirling madness of this little nugget of gaming poultry. I'm not sure why I'm using poultry as a metaphor, but uh, that's just where fate has brought us and it's best to accept that. Also, Ross is here. Hi! I'm Ross from the show Ross's Game Dungeon. And other things! I talk about games too! Now, I'm no stranger to weird games, but I don't normally talk about Asian or Japanese games. Honestly, I don't get Japan. At all. In the 60s, long after World War II ended, they were still finding Japanese soldiers hiding out in the Pacific Islands still thinking the war was going on. So, Tom here has invited me to help cover this game, and maybe using the buddy system, we can get through this. Welcome to the madness. I can't give you props, Tom. I'm on the moon. So anyway, this is Zunzunkyo no Yabo, and you're going to need to steel yourself against the oncoming weird because this is up there with Monster Party. As in, the game where... Sorry, that's a clip of Double Dragon for Commodore 64. It doesn't have anything to do with any of this. I just think the sound effects are funny. Well, I can't say I'm a fan of the music, but I like this title screen with the silhouettes of cackling dolls in front of what I assume are the fires of hell. I watch a lot of horror movies. If one of them had a cover like this, I'd be tempted to rent it. I've rented Weirder, I'm sure. You know, back when renting was a thing. Now I just look on Netflix for movies that have things like motorcycles that know karate. I'm on the moon. This game has a level select option. Each of these is represented with a towering shadowy figure. I'm gonna pick this one first, as determined by a highly sophisticated metric developed by some very scientifically minded contacts of mine. Yeah, this screen is pretty much exactly what I expect from a Japanese game. This is why I typically don't play them. This looks a little like the opening scene to Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, except there's no Harrison Ford to anchor me back to something I can relate to. Plus, that was Shanghai. While a crowd of onlookers announces your presence, you walk into the middle of a crowded disco hall and start blasting all the dancers. Disco Queen. Oh, that's a battle cry if ever I heard one. Okay, originally I thought the protagonist was a Buddhist monk, but an informative website helpfully pointed out to me that the hero is actually a statue of the Buddha, or rather a statue of Jizo, who is a... an enlightened monk, who may or may not be considered an incarnation of the Buddha depending on who you ask. If you're not confused yet, just give it time, there's still hope. The idea that he's a statue would explain why he has no walking animation and just kind of hovers around. And he shoots fireballs with tiny swastikas in them. I've spoken to a Buddhist monk before. He didn't do any of this. Now, the text at the beginning states that this is some kind of faction for you to come along and destroy, but what kind of faction, I don't know. None of these dancers seem interested in anything except dancing. They're just doing their own thing, and here you are running in and blowing them all to macarons while they throw hearts and paper fans. Okay, you might be asking yourself, why did I say macarons instead of smithereens? No, that's fine. Uh, it takes two hits to defeat these, and after the first hit, their faces become swollen and forlorn. What grotesque purpose can there be to this slaughter? 
There are also waiters who come by with trays and drinks. You have to destroy them too, because literally everything about this is insane. <laughs> Listen to that laugh. That is the most light-hearted, pleasant, good-natured laugh I've ever heard, coming out of the mouth of someone who just massacred a dance hall with fireballs made of pure Buddhism. He's, he's just so delighted. <laughs> That guy is wearing an awful lot of makeup for a man. Oh, I see. I think he's overcompensating so he doesn't look like his friend there. I mean, I'm not the beauty police or anything, but those eyebrows don't look good at all. In this level, Japanese Eugene Levy here throws shoes at you. I'm not sure what sort of establishment this is, but this guy and his wife, or rather the 40 clones of him and the small handful of clones of his wife, or... Whoever she is, I, I'm sorry, I got lost in that sentence. Ross, what was I talking about? Uh, you were saying clones are dangerous and we need to kill them. I think the game agrees with you. According to my translation team... Hi, Kaylin. Hello! This takes place in Bean's Store Hotel Banquet Hall. I think that helps us out a lot. Now, there's sort of a pattern to all of these levels. Every stage has one main enemy that takes two hits, and after the first hit they take on a weird second form. The second enemies are less frequent, take only one hit, and spawn at regular intervals, or random intervals, I'm not sure. Yeah, random sounds right. Also, I haven't mentioned any of the power-ups yet. Most of them are pretty standard. Things like uh, this thing, which makes you invisible. A hammer that makes you small. A gun that makes you irresistible to goldfish. A small Swedish man with some big ideas. And a bust of Pete Postlethwaite made out of lightly basted Tofurky, which, when combined with a crystal chalice of Enderthorn, refracts light in such a way that turns Republicans to your whims. I miss that part. It's DLC. But there's also an upgrade power that turns you into a different statue of the Buddha that become more and more like... I don't know... Kali? and shoot multiple fireballs while looking like you exist only to destroy mortals. DESTROY MORTALS! Sorry, am I in the minority here that I don't want to wipe out this entire planet? Oh, you also have one of those special attacks that destroys everything on screen, which is done through the summoning of more Buddhist statues, I think? Ross, what's going on? Buddha is the bomb! What? No, no, that's pretty succinct. Oh, so this is a subway! See, I don't think I'll ever be able to fully appreciate this game as a Westerner. Like, if I was going to work and I saw a smiling monk just shooting people as they got out the cars, I would stay inside. Did you know they pack subways so tight in Japan that they'll actually have people whose job it is to shove everyone inside as the doors close so they can cram the maximum number in? Actually, this level's where I started to kind of figure this whole thing out. I think the idea here isn't so much that the hero is committing mass murder. I think it's metaphorical for destroying that within himself that causes him to be in conflict with the outside world. He experiences common stressful situations like being stuck in a crowded train station. To follow the way of the Buddha is to eliminate your desires for... Uh... Oh, now see, this part I understand. That's a kabuki-looking demon. Nobody wants that. We have to kill it, Tom. Okay, I'm not sure how this fits into my hypothesis. I'm pretty sure gigantic murderous kabukis do not represent daily strife that a student of the Buddha should learn to be at peace with. It's a demon. You don't negotiate with demons. That's always been my policy. I'm freaking out! I'm freaking out! I lied! I'm freaking out! Die! 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 Also, I noticed that when our hero is defeated, he turns into an angel and flies away. That's not really a Buddhist thing. So I'm about as confused by this premise as I could possibly be at this point, I'm just gonna have to learn to be comfortable with that. Now we've defeated the very shocked Kabuki, and a spherical creature jumps up with a fan. He appears at the end of every stage. Is this a friend of yours? Like, a fan cheering you on? The real bad guy? The game never explains this! Okay, I don't know what's happening here, but all I can say is this next level is going to be fabulous. Well, I don't know about flaming balls of energy, but if this was going on in my backyard, I would probably try to break it up with a water hose. 
But is this even our yard? Are we just invading an outdoor dance practice? Now, about this time, you might realize that these four different levels represent a different geographical location, so you can choose which part of the world you want to invade with your enlightened message of peace, and then blow the living styrofoam peanuts out of it. This level takes place in Europe, and features such very European things as men prancing around in tights and uncomfortable crotch bulges. Wow, I'm impressed. There is a story behind this picture. I think that's a matador grinning over a dead bull that's crying after being sliced to pieces? Why, Japan? Why would you do this? What makes a person sit down and draw an animal that has been butchered and has them crying, and the intention is for this to be cute? Or is it supposed to be cute? I don't know what this development team has going on inside its hive mind, but I'm pretty sure if I was psychic, all I'd be able to read is bees. Oh, I see. We're at some exclusive restaurant and are executing flamenco dancers on the floor in front of the diners for their amusement. Take a good look, because this is a taste of the future. Is that what's going on? I swear, I thought they were matadors. Well, I mean, they're, they're throwing roses at us, so I'm willing to concede that I'm not exactly an authority on anything that happens in this game, but I mean... That bull in the first picture, but... Huh? Olé! Okay, so I guess we agree this is Spain. That puts my mind to rest. Okay, this picture looks like it could have come straight out of one of my dreams. Yeah, I get that distinct feeling from this picture that I've seen it dozens of times and have repressed the memory every single time. What have we got? A tiny scary clown toy and a bunch of rampaging teddy bears. President Roosevelt would have never allowed this to happen. Has science gone too far? Yeah, out of all the levels I've seen so far, this one resembles my unconscious mind the most. I don't like it. Apparently this is indicative of European culture. We're getting further and further away from the idea that this is about Buddhism. I'm not trusting my hypothesis much anymore. Okay, I suppose it would be too much to hope for that this next level is a Ghouls and Ghosts Castlevania crossover level, huh? Because I would want to play that. According to the intro text, this boss is actually King Arthur. So are we suddenly in the Dark Ages? You play as King Arthur in Ghouls and Ghosts! I'm pretty sure in Ghouls and Ghosts you're just a guy who happens to be named Arthur. King Arthur is a whole other package of what the frack. But he has a beard! And if this really is King Arthur, why is there an upside down cross intertwined with snakes? And skulls with vines coming out of the eyes and mouth? And Arthur's shooting bullets from a five-barreled shotgun hidden in his chest? Is King Arthur a time-traveling cyborg? Again, this screen is what I expect from a Japanese game. Hey, these dancers are throwing yin-yangs at us, but that's bad and the monks are dodging them. Doesn't that represent balance? So that hurts us, yet we're playing as enlightened monks. This game could be deeper than I thought. There's something going on here. If anyone in the audience with a theology or philosophy background wants to clear this up for us, please do. Yes, please. I'm dying to hear everyone's interpretations of this game. My girlfriend says she thinks this game's message is that religion is destroying Japan and ultimately the world. Like, this is a Japanese fear-mongering response to Buddhism and Christianity creeping into primarily an atheistic society and I guess ruining everything. As for me, I'm starting to feel the real message of this game is racism. We're traveling the world killing the local equivalent to white guys in blackface, and I'm pretty sure the Asia level set is the most racist depiction there is. I can't shake the feeling these developers really had it in for the Chinese. Once again, nothing about this screen surprises me for an Asian game. I like how we have a crowd of pink rabbits cheering us on. Holy crap, I didn't even notice that. And uh... It's hard to know if these crowds are cheering us on or not. All they yell is, it's Zunzunkyo, like they're just announcing our presence. I can't tell if they're excited or terrified. The fact that it's now a congregation of bunnies just adds a new layer to this mystery. Oh, I see the problem. These pandas are wearing clothes. We can't have that. Animals should know their place. This is subversive and will cascade into something terrible if we don't stop it. 
And these pandas are throwing swords at us. Are these sentient pandas? People in panda costumes? Or did somebody just dress up the pandas in these outfits and then arm them with ancient weaponry? I get that at this point they're just trying to come up with various stuff stereotypical to Asia for you to fight. But if you look at the actual flavor text at the beginning, it actually describes their foes here as the Panda Children Defense Faction. So I'm not sure there's any ambiguity anymore. At this point you're straight up killing endangered species. Well, they should have thought about that before they picked up a sword. Okay, this part doesn't look Japanese. She looks like she could be Indian. Okay, yeah, these are definitely Indians we're fighting. First time I played this, I actually thought it was ancient Egypt for some reason. I guess it was the desert, the topless women, and when you shoot them they turn into skeletons. I figured it was a mummification thing. They look Indian to me. There has to be some politics going on here. But wait, is that a statue of Siddhartha in the sand there? Wouldn't that make this kind of a revenge? That's not a very Buddhist mentality, is it? I get the feeling there was some real rage behind the making of this level. I'm just alarmed at how there are rows of topless women, and when you shoot them they turn into skeletons. I'm not sure what any of this has to do with India, or the desert, or... Where exactly are we? Also, female toplessness is not really a thing that happens in India. Maybe it used to be, back before the Muslim conquest in the 14th century. It could be that these developers are pretty behind the times, but I'm more of the mind that they just wanted to draw boobies. All that said, the opening level text says that this is the Namaste Desert, and that this faction is the Health is from Yoga faction. So we're essentially attacking some yoga students trying to better themselves and live healthy because... What is our hero's motivation? I never really thought of Buddhism and yoga as being incompatible. I'm really drawing a blank here. I guess the yoga thing explains the loincloths, but why they turn into skeletons? Is that a statement on health nuts being too skinny? Okay, for an early 90s game, this boss music is pretty rad. But then they have the Asian woman come in and start squeaking. Why do they do that? Man, this is just about exactly my feelings on the music in Sonic CD. I just... I can't go into it. I just need to do a whole video about it. Oh, by the way, this boss is a Chinese chef, I think, who throws dumplings at you, I think. Ross? Well, as far as video games go, a giant chef trying to kill you is pretty standard fare. This is nothing. Usually they throw cleavers. Well, that's at least a weapon. Throwing dumplings is not exactly... And he's inside a bowl of soup! Just hopping around inside a bowl full of noodle soup. I can only imagine it's the source of his power because any other explanation I could possibly come up with would be the kind of explanation I'd have written on the walls of my padded cell in my own poo. Okay, I can't read Japanese, but I feel like this screen is fairly self-explanatory. Yeah, well, I'd like to point out that the name of this location is, well... Yeah, so there's that. In this level, you face a legion of metalheads just rocking out, plus... Are those... Ozzy Osbournes? And it's all in some kind of giant spiderweb. I don't know, metal is weird. Maybe they just decided to make their concert hall look like a spider web, which, as far as middle goes, is pretty half-baked. Where are the blood geysers and the tubes that dispense scalding hot coffee? Okay, not enough punks the first time! I have to be honest, I've seen better punk games than this. It looks like this is taking place on a basketball court. So I'm assuming the punks got into an argument with the monks after the concert, and now they're settling things out back now that the show's over. I get a weird West Side Story vibe to the punks' carefully choreographed movements while they do battle with Zun Zunkyo. This really seems like a weird setup to a joke that goes nowhere. A legion of punk rockers and a statue of the Buddha walk into a basketball court, and the bartender says, Look, I already don't know why I was hired to serve drinks in a basketball court, but I didn't sign up to be party to a turf war, so I'm just gonna take off if you guys don't mind. Did I mention you shoot swastikas? Just wanted to remind everyone of that fact. God bless America. Here we have an obviously transgendered person along with what either is a burn victim with a mask, kind of like the Phantom of the Opera, or maybe this is just an all-out dancing automaton. I can't decide. 
Okay, this is the part of the game that sucks for me, since I'm not really into Broadway or vaudeville. I'd rather just throw down with some more pongs. Plus, I don't like having to fight all these transgender dancers, because they remind me of Jack Torts from the Jerky Boys. And he's hilarious. I don't think they're transgender, they're just women with short hair. That's a thing, right? Female tap dancers with short hair and pantsuits? Wait, when you shoot them, their head gets bigger and their hat disappears, revealing that they're bald, and... I don't understand a great many things about this game. Well, it's Broadway. What do you expect? Okay, and now we're fighting Captain America. Not a smidgen of fooling, literally Captain America. He floats around like a marionette, and then flexes and... <laughs> Just ice. Oh, justice! I'm sure there's some symbolism here, but it's a little over my head. It would probably help if I knew what the text said, but then maybe this is all we're supposed to see. Like, on one hand, I'm thinking this could be the reverse of how a lot of Westerners see Asians as looking alike. So maybe this is what we look like to the Japanese. Well, Tom's Canadian, but I'm American. On the other hand, maybe they're trying to expand our minds. Like in Buddhism and Zen, they have koans which are riddles that you're not supposed to figure out literally, but adjust your way of thinking so that they make sense. That could be what's going on here. I may just not be enlightened enough to get it. What about you, Tom? Well, I had some friends translate the text. Hello! And none of the text explains anything. I'm forced to just take this at face value, which is that a statue of the Buddha is fighting Captain America, who, as an attack, body slams out the letters that spell the word justice. I know there's a lot of things wrong going on here, but can I just briefly point out that Captain America can't fly? I just wanted to express that. So now that all four bosses are defeated... What in the leopard skin tights of Abraham Ghost Lincoln is that? Is that the guy with the fan earlier? Because it didn't have those weird ears. Or are those its arms? That have dramatically changed in size? I know it's oval, not spherical. I have no idea what this thing is. And what are these? Are those eyes? Are they mouths? Both they have ponytails, Ross! They have ponytails! That's impossible! What is this stark, unleaded, gluten-free madness? I think they're dancing mannequins that were designed by people, or rather, beings, that weren't quite familiar with what humans look like, so they modeled them after Janice from the Muppets instead, complete with her giant lips. I have no problem destroying these. We're cleaning up someone else's mistake. Then we have nope happening. Ross, would you care to elaborate on the nope that is taking place here? Get ready for the next stage of enlightenment, Tom. I think these are other Buddhist statues that you have to fight, just spinning soullessly in place. Hey, here's some symbolism for you, since apparently this game doesn't have enough already. At first, it looks like we're fighting soulless clay dolls with empty eye sockets. But only as we kill them with fire do we see for a split second that they have emotions and we're alive inside their shell. I'm not sure we're the good guys. Yeah, that's basically what I've feared this entire time. It's kind of like... Damn. The last level, you face a black eyeball. The Abyss is staring back at us, Tom. Nietzsche warned us about this sort of thing. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You face the Earth itself. You actually fight planet Earth as the final boss. That's much better. Or is it an alien planet? It looks kind of purplish, and I don't recognize any continents. But some kind of planet, I'm sure. They tried to make the mini-Earths look cute, huh? And just listen to that same jovial, innocent laugh after he destroyed an entire world. I will never get over that. Oh, that's great. No ending, huh? That's pretty lame. I think this game isn't about Buddhism. It's about nihilism in disguise. Actually, there is an ending. Really? Oh, let me guess. This is a Japanese game, so you have to play through the whole thing without getting hit once to see it? Actually, you just need to play through all the levels twice. Yeah, pretty close. Well, Tom, thanks for having me. Zunk you sure is something. 
It's a shame it has no actual end. Oh my god, it's a burglar! Russ? Sh should I call the police? Hello, uh, the moon? Hi, I'd like to report a possible burglary, which may or may not be an excuse to get out of playing a Japanese game where the Buddha in statue form kills an entire planet. Yes, thank you, I'll hold the moon. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, look, Ross, stay with me here. I beat the levels again. Hey, that's great. The burglar was a false alarm. It was just the mail. Okay, sure. So, are you ready for this? That's my big strong man. Totally worth it. If you translate the text, here's what it says. Humanity was saved, I'm gonna note it uses the word that means spiritually saved, you know, such as salvation, by the efforts of the gold and silver monks. But I wonder if that's good. They've beaten the Earth's unconsciousness. That's good, isn't it? This is not my commentary, that is what it says. The game doesn't even know if the fact that you won is a good thing or not. Beating the Earth's unconsciousness sounds pretty hardcore, actually. Uh, let me try and break this down. First, it refers to the players as the gold and silver monks. So, are we statues or not? Are we just monks? But we're gold and silver, so maybe we're statues made of gold and silver. I'm pretty baffled. And that says we beat the Earth, so it's not some alien planet. We literally defeat the entirety of planet Earth. Or the Earth's unconsciousness? What does that mean? The Earth's spirit? Please, please tell me your theories on this. I'm Tom, and this is Ross. And this game may have been intended as some kind of strange joke, some kind of grim commentary on religion, or just a stream of consciousness peek at the designer's own personal madness. Either way, this is still one of the weirdest games we've ever played, and both of our brains are now irreparably harmed. Good night!